Hello and welcome to NGen Math Geometry by eMath Instruction. My name is Kirk Weiler and today we're going to be starting a new course, Geometry. And we're going to be starting with Unit 1, Lesson 1 on points, lines, and segments. So without further ado, let's get right into it and start with the fascinating and engaging topic of geometry. All right. Now, geometry is really a subject unlike almost any other in math where we need to build it from the ground up. And a lot of what we're going to be doing in the introductory lessons is, of course, material that you've been seeing over the years. But we still need to cover it because geometry is a house built on a foundation little by little by little. So let's begin and let's talk a little bit about points and lines. Now geometry is the study of space and its properties, the rules it must live by. Two basic ideas about space are the point and the line. So let's talk about the definitions of a point and a line. Now points. A point is a physical location in space, an actual location in space. It has zero dimensions and it is often represented by a very small filled in circle and a capital letter. Now again, even though you've got something like this, which is a point, okay, I want to be very clear about something. A point and a circle aren't the same thing, all right? A point has no dimensions whatsoever. It's smaller than an atom, smaller than an electron. It's literally a point in space. Now, lines or straight lines. A line is a continuous collection of points that extends forever in two directions. When we refer to lines in this course, it will always be assumed that we're talking about straight lines, all right? Anything else, a curved line, we won't be talking about a line. So a line is just something that is a continuous set of points that extends forever in two directions. All right, let's get into it. All right, exercise number one. Given points A and B shown below, answer the following questions. Letter A, how many lines can be drawn through point A? Illustrate. All right, well, why don't you pause the video for a moment and draw some lines through point A and see if you can answer the question of how many lines can be drawn through point A. Well, it's an infinite number of lines, right? Because as we start to draw these lines, and I'm going to just sort of like hand sketch them right now so it doesn't take too much time. That just completely missed point A. That's maybe why I shouldn't hand sketch them. Um, but, you know, we've got that line, this line, this line, this line, right? There's an infinite number of, infinite number of lines. In other words, so many that we can't even count them. All right, great. But letter B, how many lines can be drawn through both A and B? Illustrate. So I want to know how many lines will go through both A and B. Pause the video now and think about this problem. Well, now here the answer is simply one, all right? And we can see that by simply taking a straight edge, all right, now obviously most of the straight edges that we use in this course are going to be rulers, but we're just going to take a straight edge and we are going to use it to draw, to draw the one and only straight line <laughs> that goes through A and B. One line, all right. Now, one of the things that's going to be very important in geometry is being able to properly name what I would call geometric objects. Points are the simplest of all because we simply name them with capital letters, point A and point B. Lines, though, we can name in numerous ways. And one of the ways that we can name a line is by naming two points that lie on the line. So, for instance, this line contains points A and B. So I write A, B right beside each other. And then I put a symbol over it that looks like a line with two arrows. All right. Now, the order of those two letters doesn't matter. So I could have called this line A, B, or I could call this line B, A and they are exactly the same line. So when I see something like this, what that means is that I'm talking about the one and only one line that goes through both points A, point A and point B. 
Now this brings us to a very important idea in geometry. Let me get rid of my straight edge right now. A fundamental assumption which is also known as a postulate in geometry. Through any two distinct points, there exists one and only one line that can be drawn. This line can be named using two points that lie on it, for example, AB with a little arrow over it, and sometimes using a single lowercase letter, which we'll see in the next exercise. Now again, this is a very important idea. There is only one line, if, you, if I give you two points, and I say draw the line that passes through them, there's only one that will do so. And this is an assumption about physical space. Now obviously there's lots of curved lines that can go through two different points, but there's only one straight line. All right, let's keep going. Exercise number two. Given points P, Q, and R and line M do the following. Letter A. Give another, lane, give another name for line M. All right, so line M is this line right here. Now, sometimes we will name lines with lowercase letters, never uppercase letters, lowercase letters. But we can give this line at least one, if not two other names. Pause the video now and go ahead and name that line. All right, well, because points P and R lie on that line, we can name it with those two points. So we can either call it PR or we could call it RP. And both of those are completely acceptable ways of naming line M. All right, let's take a look at letter B. Draw line PQ and line QR. All right, now awesome. Remember, when we're asked to draw lines, make sure you're drawing lines. That includes things like arrows at the end. So if I'm going to draw line PQ, again, probably a little bit easier for you because you have a real ruler as opposed to a digital one, right? I'm going to draw the line all the way through the two points, and then I'm going to put arrows on the two ends. All right, that's simple. So there's my line PQ. Why don't you go ahead and pause the video now and draw line QR. All right, let me get line QR up there real quick. I'll get better with this ruler as time goes on, I hope. There we go. All right, and there is my line QR. Great. Let's take a look at letter C. Point Q is common to both PQ, line PQ, and line QR. A point that is shared by two distinct lines is known as what? All right, so what is this point considered for line PQ and line QR? It's got a name, I bet you remember it from algebra. All right, it's known as an intersection point. We can call it an intersection point, or we can just call it an intersection. All right, let's take a look at letter D. What is the maximum number of shared points two distinct lines can have? So in other words, how many intersection points can two distinct lines? And by the way, I have to keep putting in the word distinct there to say, hey, look, these are different lines. Okay, I'm not talking about the same line because two lines that are the same line share an infinite number of points. But if you've got two different lines, what is the maximum number of times they can intersect? Pause the video now. All right, well, they can intersect at most once. Okay, and again, this is a postulate or an assumption that we make just based on all of our knowledge, right? If I've got a line and another line and they're both straight, the most I can have is one intersection point. That's the most, all right? And we can also have lines that we'll see eventually that have no intersection points, but if they are different, the most they can have is one. Now you might say, ah, but you know, what if I have a line that goes like this and then a line that goes like this, right? Well, in this case, of course, this is no longer a straight line. That is a curved line, okay? So two straight lines can intersect at most once. 
All right, let's keep going. Easy stuff, right, early on in geometry. Let's now talk about line segments. So a line segment, or just what we'll refer to as a segment, right? A line segment is a continuous set of points, all right, so there's no gaps in it, that lie along a given line between two points on the line. The line segments are named using their two endpoints, for instance, AB with a little line segment above it, no arrows, or BA with a little line segment above it, again, no arrows. So very similar to the way we name lines, the difference is segments have a little segment above them, lines have little lines above them, which is convenient. It would be weird if it were the other way around. All right, exercise number three. Given points A, B, C, and D shown, do the following. Letter A, draw in segment BC and AD. All right, go ahead and do that. That's simple enough. All right, so in this case, we want to draw segments and not lines. So I want to draw in segment BC. So we will get our ruler set up. And there's our segment BC, pretty much. Segment AD. All right, there we go. Segment BC and segment AD, the portions of line BC and line AD that lie between those two sets of endpoints. Let's take a look at letter B. Draw line AB and line CD. Okay, great. Why don't you go ahead and draw those two lines? All right, here we go. Again, same idea, right? The difference here is that we don't want to be drawing segments. We want to, whoops, we want to be drawing lines. That was supposed to rotate. There we go. And so this time we get a little bit of that going. And, oh, and we get a little bit of that going. Uh-oh. Come back your diagram. There it is. And get rid of that. All right. So we've got segments, we've got lines. Finally, letter C. BC and AD intersect at point E. Mark point E on the diagram. All right. Well, it's simple enough, right? BC and AD intersect, meaning that they have a common shared point right? And that shared point is right here. Most of the time, shared points like that won't even be sort of filled in the way that I just did it. The idea is if I had a letter sitting near that intersection point, that letter is referring to that intersection point. All right, let's move on. Here we go. Exercise number four. Given points E, F, and G shown, do the following. Letter A, Draw EF and EG. All right, that's simple enough. Why don't you go ahead and draw EF and EG? All right, simple enough. Right, I wanna draw in EF. Tilt it a little bit more. And EG. Okay, great. Got those two line segments in. Now, exercise number four, letter B. Determine the following using your ruler. Round to the nearest tenth of a centimeter. EF equals and EG equals. All right, so let's talk about what these things even mean. All right, EF is literally the length of segment EF, or better yet, the distance between points E and F, and EG is the length of segment EG. All right, that's all they are, right? Now again, it's a little tricky, right? Because now we've seen three things that are named with these double letters. One of them being a line, that's when it has a little line symbol over it. One of them being a segment, that's when it has a little segment symbol over it. And one of them being the length of the segment, and that's when there's nothing over it whatsoever, right? So this is simple enough, right? If I wanna measure the length of EG or EF, Again, EF is the distance between points E and points F. It looks like that is four centimeters on the dot. It does say to the nearest tenth of a centimeter. 
so I'm gonna put 4.0 centimeters. Why don't you go ahead and measure EG? All right, let's take a look. Whoop, boy, I thought that would just rotate. Here we go. Looks like EG is 4.8 centimeters. Now, if you're sitting watching this video right now at home or with your teacher in class or whatever, and you've got this worksheet sitting in front of you and you got, let's say, 3.8 centimeters here and 4.6 centimeters there, or something close but not exactly the same as I did, that's okay. All right, not because you wanna mismeasure anything, but because our worksheets, when they get photocopied, can sometimes either get enlarged or get shrunk down some. And so, especially when I ask you to measure distances, if they're off by a little bit, that's okay. Angles, when we measure them, those should be more or less on the money, okay? But distances slash lengths, they can be a little bit different. Let's take a look at the final issue on this question, letter C. Which point, F or G, is closer to point E? All right, well this should just be common sense, but why don't you pause the video now and go ahead and write something down. Well, it's pretty simple, right? Something is closer to something else if it's a smaller distance than whatever you're comparing it to. So obviously, since the length of EF is smaller than the length of EG, that means that point F is closer to E than point G is. So, I'm gonna say point F because EF is less than EG, right? And that's really, really important. In fact, one of our fundamental assumptions in geometry is going to be that the shortest distance between any two points in space is the length of the straight line segment that connects the two of them. One more time, the shortest distance between two points in space is going to be the length of the straight line segment that connects those two points. You can't get between two points in any shorter path than going through that straight line. All right, let's keep going. Now, real important term, collinear points. Three or more points that all lie in the same line are known as collinear. Now, don't get me wrong, two points that lie in the same line are also known as collinear, as are four points, five points, etc. But any two points are gonna lie on a straight line, okay? So we very rarely talk about two points being collinear. But once we have three points, those three points can all lie on the same line, or they won't. So, for instance, in this particular picture, points A, B, and C are three collinear points. And what this means is that if I draw a straight line, going through any one of those two, it will also go through the third one. So if I draw it through A and B, it'll also pass through C. Or if I draw it through A and C, it'll also pass through B. Now in the other situation, we have three non-collinear points, which means if I draw a line between two of them, say E and F, it won't also pass through G, all right? So collinear points are three points or more that all fall along a straight line. Very important idea. So, for our final exercise, let's take a look at exercise number five. Given collinear points H, I, and J shown, do the following. Letter A, draw in segment H, I, J. Now, this is an interesting one. You know, before this problem, we had been naming segments always with just two letters, their beginning letter and their, sorry, their beginning point and their ending point. There are no beginning letters and ending letters on segments. Anyway, but when you see something like this, H, I, J, all with a segment line above it, that means that those three points are collinear, collinear. Right, and it's easy enough to draw that in, right? All I have to do is come over here, you know, just rotate my straight edge up, draw in that segment, and done. All right, now let's take a look at letter B. Find each of the following to the nearest tenth of a centimeter. All right, why don't you pause the video and go ahead and find each one of those distances slash lengths. All right, well first, let's talk about HI, right? 
HI is the distance between point H and point I, and that looks like 4.2 centimeters. In fact, I'm gonna write it up, <laughs> I'm going to try to write it up on my graph itself, 4.2 centimeters. Now for IJ, I'm just going to move my ruler over, and it looks like IJ is 2.6 centimeters. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna put that up here too, 2.6 centimeters. And now if I measure HJ, which is the length between H and J, I'm getting, <laughs> I'm getting 6.8 centimeters. And let me erase that in case you think it's a repeating fraction bar, which it's not. So all of this is 6.8 centimeters. Funky M. Okay, so let's talk about letter C, something that should be completely obvious. Write down an equation that summarizes the relationship between these three lengths. All right, well, let's talk about this. This is a very important idea, right? And it's, it should be a very obvious idea. If I take the length of HI and I add to it the length of IJ, right, 4.2 plus 2.6, not surprisingly, I get 6.8. Literally, let me write this to the side real quick. 4.2 plus 2.6 gives me 6.8, right? And that makes sense because we're basically saying, look, if three points lie in a straight line, then the distance from the first point to the last point can be gotten by taking the distance between the first point and some intermediate point added to the distance between that intermediate point and the last point. And again, this works because the three points lie in a straight line. So what I can now say is I can simply say that H I plus I J is equal to H J. And notice, I don't have any segment symbols over them. I don't have any line symbols over them. I'm literally saying this length plus this length is equal to that length. We'll eventually call this the partitioning principle. We'll also call it the whole, which is HJ, is the sum of its individual component parts. But I think it's probably pretty obvious for right now. All right, let's wrap this up. Now, again, if a lot of what we did today was very basic points, lines, segments, distances, even that last piece with partitioning, if all of that seems rather obvious, that's really good at the beginning of geometry. We want to start with the obvious in geometry. Again, those are what we call postulates, axioms, assumptions, right, about physical space. And we're then going to build that up gradually, little by little. All right, and we'll see that in our next lesson when we start to talk about things like circles, rays, angles, other geometric objects. For now, I just want to thank you for joining me for another geometry lesson by eMath Instruction. My name is Kirk Weiler, and until I see you again, keep thinking and keep solving problems.